Weekly Gear Update is brought to you by Mid-South Shooter Supply. Hi, and welcome to the Weekly Gear Update. I'm Ed Mobley. And I'm Steve Lawrence. And today we have with us the Annealing Made Perfect Machine. It's an induction annealer, and we've been hearing a lot lately about induction annealing. You've seen a lot of folks out there with their homebrew uh, solutions. Yep. And now we, we actually have a, a commercial induction annealer on the market. Yeah, in fact, this is one of the, the high-end units that are out there. Induction annealing is very different than a flame-based annealing that many of us use. We both currently use the bench source, but induction annealing is different because it doesn't actually use any type of contact to anneal the brass. It, it passes a magnetic current through that bat brass, and either based on the strength of the magnetic current or the resistivity of the brass, that'll cause the temperature to rise, thus annealing the, the brass. It's the same as the induction cooktops. Yeah, exactly. And so what's really cool about this machine is it is pre-programmed for various uh, makes and, and, and calibers of, of, of cartridges. And they've got a video about this on the Annealing Made Perfect site. But what they've done is, is you know, they'll look, for example, at, at you know, the Lapua 6.5x47 and using a, a Vickers hardness tester, they will determine what is the appropriate you know, duration uh, for that, that particular cartridge. And also these pilots position it within the, the induction coil just right. That's why you have different pilots uh, for, for each type of cartridge. Yeah, each cartridge is different in terms of size, the thickness of the brass, where that neck and shoulder actually sits within this unit so you need these in order to make sure it sits in the, in the right spot yeah and when i uh and you, and you can go to their website and they've got a spreadsheet which they update regularly so you can look up your particular cartridge and it'll, it'll tell you two things that are, that are very important it'll tell you which pilot to use and some pilots serve uh multiple uh, uh cartridges so you you select the pilot in this case number 50 for the 65 by 47 lapua and then you, you choose your, your program, and you can do that by, the, by selecting the, the up and uh, down button or the, the plus and minus button right here on the front panel. Mm -hmm. Then you have this, which is you need something actually to hold the brass. Correct, because it does get hot. And then literally when, I mean, I was annealing within minutes of, of taking this out of the box. Oh, and another thing too, if you do neck turn, uh, they different program. Yeah, the different program, and, and mm -hmm. the spreadsheet does cover that. So you, you simply put it in there. You press the button. You notice it turns red. Done. Now, yeah, done. Right. You, you pull it out, and then you know while they do recommend a metal bin, you know even with this tablecloth, it's it's not setting anything on fire. And then you just you know wash, rinse, and repeat, and it's it's just really easy. I've suggested to them that they add a buzzer because several times I was just chit-chatting or daydreaming and I didn't know whether I pressed the button. Of course, I had to just feel if it was hot or not. So. Right. Now, obviously, this is a very precise machine, probably the most um, precise type of annealing out there, but it doesn't allow you to queue up a large lot of brass using a turntable or, for example, this right. is that feeder bin. Right, and I shared with Alex Finley, who's the owner, I, when, when, I, when I played around with this, I said, really, that, that, that's the only downside I would see, is if you're doing like, like 300 cartridges, it is going to take a little longer you than... You to pay attention to what you're doing. Right, than, yeah. than, than, the, than the turntable uh, type of annealer or like a semi-automatic one like, like, the, like the Girat. But then again, you, you got to look at the, at the big picture. And for me, there's peace of mind in knowing that it is programmed precisely. Mm -hmm. Because if you go and, and read our initial article on annealing, one of the things that I, that I had observed is even though we were annealing with the proper temperature, the brass never got as soft as original factory brass. Mm -hmm. It never did. But I spoke to, 
to several uh, folks in the industry and some engineers and they said, yes, but still stress relief is occurring. But what I did notice is even though I was annealing, with each successive reload to maintain the same shoulder setback, I was having to change my die setting. And, and that just bothered me because it was like, annealing should be getting rid of that spring back. I shouldn't see my cases still get successively harder you know, as, as I shoot them. Mm -hmm. Now I could have just increased the dwell time, but then you know, the, the, the flame turns orange, which indicates you're burning off zinc. Well, after using this unit and seeing how, you know, a cartridge case that had been fired 10 times returned back to, you know, factory softness. And, and again, the way I, I would measure it was I don't have a Vickers hardness tester is, you know, I could just feel it by, by pushing two of the necks together. And it just felt like, like factory brass. So that, that just gave me another uh, bit of confidence around this this particular method. Right. Now, you know, we did mention the Vickers hardness testing, which is actually done in a laboratory, um, which is very different than what most of us use, which is the Tempolac, that temperature sensitive uh, paste or, or the, the, the liquid that you paint on. Exactly. Um, that Vickers test is extremely accurate because it actually looks at the crystalline structure that's being changed within the brass by taking a diamond anvil that's you know a couple tens of microns thick they press it in with a known force within the brass and it creates an indentation that they can actually measure to see how much that brass hardness is changing before and after so it's much much more precise than just seeing if if the tipolac burns off exactly and you can go to the annealing made perfect website and they actually have a video where they they show uh you know, Alex and his son, um, mm -hmm. there's a father-son team uh, producing this product uh, using the Vickers hardness tester, and it, it looks very expensive. <laughs> now, now here's the interesting thing. Um, you know, one of my questions was, okay, so you have a setting for 6.5 by 47 Lapua, but we all know there's lot to lot variations mm -hmm. in, in anything. And he said that in all of their testing, the lot to lot variations, even amongst you know the high end manufacturers versus the lower end manufacturers of, of brass, very, very, very consistent. Mm -hmm. But here's the here's the cool thing. If you're like really, really OCD and you're like, well, what if my lot is ever so slightly different? What they'll do is you can send them uh, some samples of your brass and they'll they'll do the hardness testing. Mm -hmm and they will either confirm the existing setting as appropriate, or if there's a different uh, program that you require for your brass, they'll tell you that. So, so that's well, really in, a nice service. Absolutely, and in yeah. addition to that, even though they have a wide array of different pilots available, these are just a small sample that they right. sent us. If you are shooting a unique cartridge that they don't currently have a pilot for, it, simply send them the case, a few cases. Yeah, they'll make a pilot. And they'll make a pilot for it. But now, I think, unless you're shooting some exotic wildcat, I think, I mean, I saw up there, you know, they had, you know, a 6SLR and, you know, some of the, the, the real uh, popular uh, cartridges. Yeah. I mean, Satterley might have to get a special pilot for the Swede more, who knows. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, just, just a, a neat machine. Now, now, one of the questions, you know, I had was, okay, this is made in New Zealand and uh, this looks like a high-tech machine. Uh, who, uh, what if I need service? And, and they do have uh, a service center here in the U.S. Yeah, they do have a service yeah. center here in the U.S. But as, as Alex had pointed, pointed out to me, this thing has literally been shipped around the world in a, I'm looking for the box. Okay, it's over there. Never mind. In, in like a, a single-sided box, you know, not, not mm -hmm. double boxed. It's even got a, yeah, a nice little dent here in the corner. Yeah, it just had quarter-inch foam all the way around it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, where it was clearly dropped and uh, presented with, you know, a lot of shock. And the things just just running like a champ. Yeah. So I'm I'm not worried about anything going wrong with it. But you know what? If it did, mm -hmm. fine. You don't have to send it back to New Zealand. Now I notice um, this is also the firmware and the programming. If there's new programs that are set up, it can actually receive those updates through this yeah, USB, USB port. Hit. Exactly. Exactly. And and they anticipate uh, you know future programs and, and and updates and mm -hmm. and that's really nice to know that you know there's a bit of future proofing. Yeah. Uh, built into yeah. the built into the product. So the magic question that a lot of you guys are asked is, you know, that's all fine and dandy. 
maybe I should upgrade to something like this, what's the price tag? So it's 995 uh, US, US and, and it comes uh, to you from uh, New Zealand. With, There's, with three pilots. With three pilots of, of your choice. Additional pilots are, are $20 mm -hmm. if, if you need more than, than the three. So a pretty big consideration, you know, everyone's trying to allocate, you know, their scarce budget towards things that they need to excel within the sport. Right. Um, potential trade-offs, you know, we're not going to get into the discussion of, well, should is this you, 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 you anneal? Is it actually going to improve your that's level a precision? Whole other, that's a whole other question. Um, one yeah. thing we know for certain is it does elongate your brass life. And um, as you mentioned, it, you're seeing some results in terms of having consistent spring back. Right, exactly. Exactly. Which, which I, I mean, consistency is good. And uh, so for, for me, of course, I'm, I, I have an appointment with the Spousal Finance Committee, but I'm, I'm thinking. Uh, seriously thinking about uh, getting one of these because I, I compare it to the the cost of a of a propane annealer and something like the bench source um i think it was around 550 when we got it mm -hmm. and you've so, got the torches you have to buy the hoses the, the you have hoses, to buy the, the five tea. gallon propane yeah the t right. regulator if you're going to use a regulator right I exactly so that's, that's probably what 100 bucks in additional right just, just or if you get a regulator may, maybe 150 so then yeah. you know there's really there's really not that much of a difference you know maybe 250 bucks between this versus a propane annealer but another thing that that i mentioned with a propane annealer is that the temperature in in in, in my basement you know, in the winter, it's about 55 degrees. In the summer, it's about 65 degrees. And I've even noticed that it, it's enough to affect the dwell time because you've got Boyle's Law that affects the uh, pressure of the propane. So in the winter, it's a roughly 90 PSI. In the summer, it's about 100 PSI because I measured it. And, and that's, a, that's enough to, to affect the uh, intensity of the flame and the mm -hmm. dwell time. So, you know, again, that's something you, you have to consider is that with a traditional propane annealer, you're going to be, you know, kind of tweaking it a bit. Yeah. And then honestly, there have been some uh, cartridges of, of a different uh, caliber that I haven't even annealed because I didn't want to disturb the perfect setting. Yeah, you bring up a really good yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. The, the, there's a, a cost of time and convenience, or exactly. say inconvenience of the changeover right. from cartridge to cartridge. Right, so even if yeah. I had that lot of 300 cartridges, let's say this, with a propane annealer, I'd have to run that whole lot through at the same time because again, being OCD, if I did half one day and half the other day, and if there was a temperature swing and I didn't recalibrate it, it could potentially yeah, it could potentially. That's a, that's a huge consideration because I yeah, know for exactly. me personally, right. I try to do things in large lots. Exactly. Not only from a consistency standpoint, standpoint, but for convenience because exactly. when I'm annealing, just that setup time is is a pain in the butt. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So so with this, I mean, I, I I can be in I could you know be annealing and, and I'm going along and and everything and then you know so I'm going along and then the lovely siren voice of my wife calls me for dinner or breakfast. She's awesome, by the way. And you can pick right back up where you left off. And I can pick right back up, yeah. or usually what I'll do is after my meal, I'll forget what I was doing, and then I'll realize next day I didn't complete my kneeling. But with this, you're not gonna have that, uh, I mean, I'd have complete confidence in, in picking up you know, where I left off, mm -hmm. knowing that I'm gonna get very, uh, very consistent results. Absolutely. Well, guys, hopefully you found this gear update informative and interesting. Remember, folks, life's an adventure. Stay on target.